Vitamin B12 is one of the most famous B vitamins out there. For good reason, because it is essential to our well-being and energy levels. B12 protects nerve and brain cells, the immune system, and also stimulates the production of serotonin, which helps boost your mood. As you probably know, it is found naturally in animal proteins such as meat, fish, eggs, and dairy products. Since it is only found in very small or even no amounts in most plant foods, B12 supplementation is especially popular among vegans. In this video, I want to go over the different types of vitamin B12 that you will find in supplements. What many people don't know is that there is a huge difference between different versions, both in quality as well as in functionality. First, we will go over the four different forms of B12, then I will explain the benefits and drawbacks of each, and lastly, I will give you my recommendation on which is best for daily supplementation. To get started, here's an overview of the four most common forms of vitamin B12 supplements. They are hydroxocobalamin, methylcobalamin, adenosylcobalamin, and cyanocobalamin. At first look, these chemical terms seem pretty confusing, right? But when you look at them in more detail, you will notice that they all end in cobalamin. This cobalamin part is the actual vitamin B12, which is made up of a cobalt iron surrounded by a corn ring. But to be bioavailable for the body, it has to be bound to something else. As you can see from the list, there are four things the B12 can be bound to. First, a hydroxyl group, which is an oxygen atom bound to a hydrogen atom to form hydroxocobalamin. Next, a methyl group to create methylcobalamin. Third, an adenosine group to form adenosylcobalamin. And fourth, a cyanide molecule to form cyanocobalamin. Now, just based on the molecules and chemical names, the average person will have no idea which of these is best for supplementation. So let me explain what all this chemical lingo means. For this, we need to start with hydroxocobalamin. It is the natural form of vitamin B12 that is found in the food you eat and it accounts for almost half of the vitamin B12 in your blood. As such, it binds particularly well to the body's own transport molecules and therefore circulates in the blood longer than any other form of vitamin B12. This ensures a long-lasting and even supply of B12. What this means is that hydroxocobalamin can be seen as having a depot effect, which on the one hand ensures an even supply of vitamin B12 to the cells, and on the other hand, it also ensures that the body's stores are quickly replenished. This is especially important in times of greater B12 needs, for example, when under stress. Another important benefit of hydroxocobalamin is its ability to scavenge both cyanide as well as nitrosative stress. Cyanide poisoning can happen as part of smoke poisoning, and when you inject hydroxocobalamin into the body, it will convert cyanide into the less toxic cyanocobalamin, which we will talk about in more detail later in the video. At the same time, it is also a scavenger of nitrogen monoxide or NO radicals, making it an excellent remedy for so-called nitrosative stress. Nitrosative stress is a huge topic worthy of its own video because it's believed to be the cause of a whole range of diseases, such as chronic inflammation and organ damage. Now to the potential drawbacks of hydroxocobalamin. The first thing you will notice is that it's fairly difficult to get as a supplement. That's because one, its isolation is more expensive than that of the other forms that we will talk about, and two, it's usually sold as an injectable liquid instead of a powder or a pill. So in most cases, you will not find hydroxocobalamin as part of a supplement, but instead at your doctor's office where he or she will inject it as the drug of choice for high-dose initial therapy when you've been diagnosed with a B12 deficiency. The next drawback is that even though hydroxocobalamin is the natural form of B12, it still needs to be converted to the two bioactive forms of B12 that the body can actually utilize. One of them is methylcobalamin, which we will talk about now. Methylcobalamin is one of the two bioactive forms of vitamin B12. That means only methylcobalamin and adenosylcobalamin can directly be used by most bodily functions, while hydroxocobalamin and cyanocobalamin 
need to be converted by the body into the other two in order to be able to become active. Like hydroxocobalamin, methylcobalamin is a natural form of vitamin B12 that is found in especially high concentrations in dairy products. Its main health benefits are the prevention of cardiovascular diseases, the protection of vessels, nerves, and the brain, and to ensure adequate synthesis of neurotransmitters. It does this by supporting three main biochemical processes. One, it reactivates folate. So without methylcobalamin, the folate in your body cannot be used properly and therefore loses its effect. The consequence of this is anemia, nerve damage, and genetic errors in cell division. Two, it also reduces the harmful effect of homocysteine. Homocysteine is a sulfur-containing amino acid that is normally present in very small amounts in all cells of the body because high levels are very damaging and increase your risk for dementia, heart disease, and a stroke. When homocysteine levels get too high, methylcobalamin helps break down homocysteine to create other amino acids your body needs. This is why if your blood test shows high homocysteine, your doctor will usually prescribe a methylcobalamin supplement that also includes the active form of vitamin B6 and methylfolate, which are two other nutrients that assist in the breakdown of homocysteine. And third, methylcobalamin helps turn methionine into S-adenosylmethionine, also known as SAMe. SAMe is the most important methyl group donor in humans and provides the methyl groups for more than 100 important reactions. For example, for detoxification, the regulation of enzymes, as well as the protection of nerves and the synthesis of neurotransmitters. Okay, now that you know of the benefits of methylcobalamin, what about its drawbacks? There aren't many, to be honest. It is slightly more expensive than cyanocobalamin, which I will get to in a second, and it could be a problem for people with methylation issues, namely overmethylators, who already have copious amounts of methylcobalamin and SAMe in their system and don't need more of it. Since methylation is a very complicated subject, I won't go into too much detail here. One last supposed drawback that you might find on the internet is that methylcobalamin is not as effective as cyanocobalamin at raising blood levels of B12. This claim is based on a 1971 study where it was found that people's bodies absorbed about 49% of a dose of cyanocobalamin and only 44% of the same dose of methylcobalamin. However, later studies have shown that cellular uptake, so the amount of B12 that actually finds its way into the cell, is higher for methylcobalamin. So although the blood levels of cyanocobalamin initially rise even higher than those of methylcobalamin, a large part of the cyanocobalamin is excreted shortly afterwards. The third main type of B12 is adenosylcobalamin. Along with methylcobalamin, adenosylcobalamin is one of the two bioactive forms of vitamin B12. It is the most common form of B12 found in tissues, especially in the liver, where most of your body's B12 is stored. If you want to get adenosylcobalamin naturally, meat would be your best option. It is a crucial component of the citric acid cycle, also known as the Krebs cycle, which is a central metabolic pathway for the production of ATP which, as you probably know, is the universal energy molecules of humans. What this means is that adenosylcobalamin deficiency leads to impaired ATP production and, as a result, to chronic fatigue, muscle weakness, underweight, and possible disabilities. In addition to its role in energy production, adenosylcobalamin is involved in the metabolism of important amino acids and hormones, such as valine, isoleucine, methionine, and cholesterol. Despite the important role of adenosylcobalamin in the body, you usually won't find it in supplements, and most people have probably never heard of it. One reason for this was unclear regulation in the past. Fortunately, nowadays adenosylcobalamin has been approved by most countries as being safe for over-the-counter sale. The final of the four main types of vitamin B12 is cyanocobalamin which is a synthetic form of vitamin B12 that is not found in our bodies or food. It is probably the most common form of B12 found in supplements 
and has been used by doctors and practitioners for many years, both for injections as well as in oral vitamin B supplements. Now, you might think that this is due to its effectiveness and safety, but the truth is that cyanocobalamin owes its popularity mostly to tradition. After all, it was first manufactured in the 1940s. Another benefit is its low cost of production. You see, no other form of vitamin B12 can be produced as easily and cheaply as cyanocobalamin. Because of it being synthetic, it cannot be used directly by our body. So instead, it has to be converted several times until you get the two bioactive forms of B12 that I already talked about, methylcobalamin and adenosylcobalamin. Obviously, this necessary conversion is a metabolic disadvantage, since some of the cyanocobalamin ingested is excreted before it can be metabolized. Now, in theory, this conversion also creates cyanide, which you probably know as a neurotoxin. However, the amount is so small that it doesn't have any negative effects on healthy people. Only if you already have high cyanide exposure, for example through smoking, could this become a problem. All in all, cyanocobalamin should be seen as the worst form of vitamin B12 supplements. It will avoid a vitamin B12 deficiency in otherwise healthy people, but we have better alternatives available. Also, if I see a supplement brand using cyanocobalamin, I instantly know that they are cutting corners to save costs. So the rest of the ingredients are probably not that great either. Now that you have a good overview of the different forms of B12, and are probably also a little confused, what type should you as the average person buy if you want to supplement B12? Well, except for cyanocobalamin, all other forms are needed by the body. So a mixture of hydroxyl, methyl, and adenosylcobalamin would be ideal. Unfortunately, very few companies sell such products, so it might be hard to find. If that isn't an option for you, in most cases, I would go with a product that has methylcobalamin. It's not as great as a combination of all natural B12 forms, but it will usually work for most people, and it's definitely of higher quality than cyanocobalamin, which I consider a junk supplement. Of course, before starting any supplement regimen, always make sure to improve your diet first and see if there are ways to get the specific nutrient through whole foods. Like I said in the beginning of the video, B12 is found primarily in animal proteins so meat, eggs, or dairy products.